Okay, here we go. It's Tanazir? Tanazir Quandrix. I'm calling this thing Tanazir Quandrix. Yeah, Tanazir Quandrix. And uh, we're talking about a true and real elder dragon here. This is... uh, Not too often we get to do a real and true elder dragon in our game that was once called Elder Dragon Highlander. Yeah, still is to many people. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like they're interchangeable. C- Commander, EDH, we, I, you know, I use both. Yeah. I mean, I try to stick with Commander because we have our podcast is Commander's Brew, not EDH Brew. But <laughs> that's just a personal choice. Yeah. We talk about EDH on Commander's Brew, which yeah. is just Commander. There's, you know, it's got two names. It's like soccer and football. Yeah. <clears throat> you, we're, the, we're a couple of Ted Lassos. It's more right depending on where you are. <laughs> But bo- both of them are still right. Like soccer mm-hmm. is more right mm-hmm. here than it is in, in England or Europe. Yeah. But um, yeah. Anyways, so let's start talking about Tanazir Quandrix then. Great. Tanazir Quandrix. This is what we're brewing around. Let me let me give you a read here. Tanazir Quandrix, three green, blue, legendary elder dragon, four, four, flying trample. Decent. Decent already. Decent. Decent. Looking good. When Tanazir enters the battlefield, double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. That's awesome. Uh, that is allowed to be Tanazir themselves if somehow you've got creatures entering with counters on them. Uh, and here's the big part. When Tanazir att- whenever Tanazir Quandrix attacks, you may have the base power and toughness of other creatures you control become equal to Tanazir Quandrix's power and toughness until end of turn. So right away, we're, we're kind of pointed in like two directions, and we're going to take advantage of it. Either you make Tanazir enormous so that whenever Tanazir attacks, everything else you have also gets enormous. Or you make something pretty big with plus one plus one counters, and then Tanazir comes down and makes that thing doubly large because of the counters. And then whenever you... Uh, plus one plus one counters work very well with changing the base power and toughness because the counters stick on top of it. If one one has five counters on it, it becomes a six six. But if you make its base power and toughness four four, then it's like a four four wearing six counters. So it's really now a ten ten. So it still works. Tanazir mm-hmm. works either way. And we're going to kind of focus in and do a bit of a boggles or bogles kind of thing mm-hmm. by making hexproof unblockably things uh, and then just make them way too big to deal with. So that's the plan. Nice. I love it. Yeah. So let's set the scene here. Um, well, Andy, what kind of, what are some of the little dudes we're going to be either putting counters on or making base power and toughness 2020? One of my favorite little dudes from recent memory uh, is included here. It's Ginger Brute, uh, mm-hmm. the one mana um, artifact creature, food golem. Love it. I forget, I forget he's a golem. That's that's fun. Um, he's got haste, and he's a 1-1, one, one, and you can pay one. And Ginger Brute can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. You know, it's uh, run, run fast as you can. Can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Ginger Brute man, well, you need to have haste to catch him. Uh, and then two tap, sacrifice him, and you can gain three life because he has food. Uh, so, yeah, just a quick little hasty guy to get in there with a little bit of evasion. That's quite nice. Um, also, we have Meringue River Prowler, two and a blue. Uh, for a 2-1 human rogue, uh, he can't block and can't be blocked. And you may cast Meringue River Prowler from your graveyard as long as you control a black or green permanent. Cool. I mean, that kind of ensures we'll always have access to at least this one. Yeah. Right? Just get out of the graveyard. But and like, so yeah, so imagine we either suit up Ginger Brute and get through almost unblockable or we suit up Tanazir and then the Ginger Brute becomes a 10-10 as we're attacking along with everything Not else. Not bad. That's pretty neat. And so, and since we're chipping away with little creatures, like there's a period of the game where we're building up. So, of course, we're going to run stuff like Kazur Ruthless Stalker, three and a green legendary human warrior, three, three partners with Ukima, but Ukima is not in this deck. Uh, whenever y- a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. This is a great way to get all our little unblockable creatures in and start putting counters on so Tanazir can double them when they decide to arrive. 
of course, this this whole deck is going to feel familiar if you are an Edric Spy Master of Trust player. Uh, Edric is, of course, in the deck. One green, blue, elf rogue, legendary 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller can draw a card. This is sort of the political version. And everybody gets to draw when they attack our opponents. But, the, of course, we can attack our opponents, and we plan to. Lots of attacking. It took me a long time to realize that the, the way this card worked after like I feel like I saw this card for like and like for the first year didn't understand that my opponents hitting my other opponents would get them to draw too. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, huge multiplayer politics. Yeah, big time. Uh and I'm just noticing I always assumed that Edric it was a gumball, but Edric's finally above a few bucks. Edric's like three or four bucks finally. Really? It's gotten a few huh. reprints too. That's interesting. Yeah. And then to round out this section of cards, it's a similar effect. It's Bident of Thassa, two blue blue, legendary enchantment artifact. Uh, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. You also give the extra ability, which I forget about a lot. One in a blue tap. Creatures your opponents control attack this turn, if able. Um, you'll use that if it's relevant. Uh, it might not be. But it's, it's nice to have it. But we're, we're, it's here to draw us extra cards. So I've painted a picture where we've got plenty of little dudes. They're getting an unblockable or they're difficult to block. We're either growing them already or we're drawing a ton of cards to get to our other spells to put counters on things and to get ready for a big Tanazir turn. Um... Right, and so so, and then here's a couple. I want to, I want to, Andy, take a couple other ones. Here's how we're going to protect things. We do this. These are the bogles I've been talking about. Right, uh, classic invisible stalker is one in a blue, uh, for a one one hex proof human rogue that uh, can't be blocked. That's like the not the original, but it's like the one we all know and love. And then yeah. we got slippery bog bonder, which is three in a green for a three three flash hex proof. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you put a hexproof counter on target creature, then move any number of counters from among creatures you control onto that creature. Uh, this card was made for Tenazir for sure. Right. right? Like, this is so, an excellent so, inclusion here. This is kind of how I talk. So, so, so you can cast Tanazir. And then with Tanazir's ability to double counters on the stack, I can cast the Bog Bonder, throw the Hexproof and all my plus one plus one counters on Tanazir, then let the ability resolve and double the amount of counters on Tanazir. So that's a way to make an enormous Tanazir. Uh, and so to ensure that anything I attack, whenever I attack, everything else becomes like a 2020 or bigger. I don't know. It's, it's very fun. The fact that it's doing that and it's giving hexproof via the uh, hexproof counter as well is mm -hmm. pretty pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. neat. Yeah, yeah. It's I, neat. I like this card. I've always liked this card. I think it's in my um, Hydra's deck. Yeah, I've included it. I don't believe I've, ca I've managed to cast it yet, but I've. Mm. But it's good. Well, that's the scene. Shall we get onto some hellish moves? Working on a neat move. We're just going to take a second to handle a little bit of business. And the main point is, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our comedic takes and offbeat decks, consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell to make sure you don't miss anything. And if you're loving our stuff and want to support further, the best way is to head over to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Find out how our generous patrons keep our show growing and how you can get in on the brewing action too through our Discord. Or, if you'd rather, just hang out and play some games with like-minded commander players. Now, let's get back to those any to names. All right. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do... Uh, what's this first one here? So, I'm just going to... Right. So, so the first neat moves, right? We've got to protect the team, right? Tanazir is a key part of the plan. Maybe we don't get Slippery Bog Bonder out, but we do have a few more ways to give our commander Hexproof or to protect it. So how about Eel Umbra, one in a blue, with a, it's a flash aura that enchants a creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. It also has totem armor, which means if this creature was going to be destroyed, instead of destroying it, get rid of this totem armor, Eel Umbra, instead. So you can flash this in on Tanazir if people are threatening to destroy it. Um, guess what? Not destroyed. Still in combat. Like, like I'm, not, I'm not removed from combat. Everything great is still happening. Um, or... Very similar to also one in a blue, 
uh, it's also a flash aura, but this is Starlet Mantle. Uh, it, the when it enters, tar- uh, the enchanted creature gains hexproof until end of turn, and the creature gets plus one plus one. So it's another way to protect uh, Tanazir, or maybe a Ginger Brute. Maybe we've got all our eggs on the Ginger Brute train, and we don't want anything to happen there. That's this is another way to protect something like that. Not bad. Um, yeah. One great way to get counters, and I've included this card in a couple of decks I've recently put together, is uh, Renata, Called to the Hunt. Mm -hmm. Uh, Two green green for the legendary enchantment creature, demigod. um, She's a star three, and her power is equal to your devotion to green. So she's often a, obviously, a two three, but obviously often bigger. Um, She also says, though, each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Just a mm-hmm. very strong ability. Um, I, I often find, though, it is one, and this is a good thing, it, it's one that goes, like, a little bit ignored because it's not, it doesn't seem, like, when it's happening, it doesn't seem like it's really has, having this major impact on the board because it's like, oh, whatever, it's one plus one plus one counter. I'm going to use my removal spell for, like, your commander or something bigger and scarier, but Renata does a lot of work in the decks that want to have plus one plus one counters on these creatures. Right, and and so that effectively, right? So we we put one ones on a ginger brute, and then if we make ginger brute's base power and toughness six six, that counter is still on top of that. Like mm-hmm. Renata does a lot of work. And do, would you read the next couple cards? Renata's best friend from Theros is in this little. Group. Oh, Renata's got to have her best friend, uh, Calif Calife Calife, beloved of the sea. One blue blue. Same deal, legendary enchantment creature, demigod, star three, power equal to their devotion to blue. Creatures and enchantments you control have spells your opponents cast that target this permanent cost one more to cast. So that's the new ward thing, basically. Um, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar, similar, right? Um, and then we also have... Uh, where is it? Monastery Yeah, siege. there it is. Monastery Siege, which is... Uh, I like this card. I've included this card in some decks. It's two and a blue. Enchantment, it's one of the cons or dragons things. Um, if you choose cons, at the beginning of your draw step, you draw an additional card, then discard a card, so you just get to loot, which is nice. And then dragons is spells your opponents cast that target you or a permanent you control cost two more to cast. Okay. So we're building up a little bit of a ward package. Yeah. Um, you know, if we don't have access to our hex proof, maybe, um, or maybe you don't want to run quite as much hex proof because, you know, uh, it's le- it's hexproof can be a little less than fun sometimes when your opponents feel like, well, I, I mean, I can't. Well, there's nothing we can do about this. So like monastery siege and and uh, Calify are nice kind of ways to get get around that, but still kind of play a little bit nicer. Um, yeah. So we've got so we've talked about a ton of protection, but how are we getting the team through? Right? Like not everyone's unblockable, right? So what what about something like a noble quarry? This is two and a green, the enchantment unicorn, one, one, uh, all creatures able to block it must do so. And you can bestow it for five and a green and the enchanted creature gets the same ability. Uh, and the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. So this is a double lure. You enchant something with it, attack, everything has to block it. So if everyone else gets through and the thing that you Enchanted with Noble Quarry probably dies, but that's okay. Now Noble Quarry is sitting on the battlefield by themselves, and you get to do it again next turn to the next living opponent, because I'm assuming that opponent is no longer alive. I love Allure. Uh, and then in similarly, uh, this is another totem armor, uh, a new one they made in uh, Commander 2018. Uh, this is Octopus Umbra. Three blue blue for an aura, enchanted creature, totem armor. If you destroy it, lose this instead of destroying the creature. Enchanted creature has base power and toughness 8-8, eight, eight, which works great with plus one plus counters, as I've mentioned, and has whenever this creature attacks, you may tap target creature with power 8 or less. Um, great. Do they have one haste thing that is allowed to block Ginger Brute? <laughs> tap it down. No, no, they yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah, good call. Yeah. And so this is this is what I've been kind of slow rolling here. Every neat move card so far was an enchantment. I noticed that. Enchantment creatures, uh, enchantments themselves, enchantment auras. So 
we're going to do a little Enchantress thing while uh, we're going on, right? Of course we're going to run, you know, Andy, give us a few of these. You got to have your Eidolon of Blossoms, who is also an enchantment. Mm -hmm. uh, spirit, creature, 2-2, two, two. Consolation, whenever it or another enchantment enters the batter battlefield under your control, you draw a card. The ETB yep. thing is key, because not all Enchantress stuff is about ETB. Some of it's about cast, so the yeah. Consolation triggers are always so great. Um, yeah. Nylea's Colossus. This was this was our preview card for this it set. Was. Um, this is a this is an absolute monster of a card. Uh, also seven mana, six and a green for six six. It's an enchantment creature, giant. Its constellation is whenever it or another uh, enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you double target creatures, power and toughness until end of turn. Right, and hmm. if you do that to Tanazir themselves. And then attack that doubling applies to your whole team. Like, like it, yeah. it, it, Night of these classes is perfect in this deck. Um, of course, we're also. Oh, yeah. Um, 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 I didn't highlight the cards, but we've got all the enchantment ramp as well. Like uh, our ramp package is in enchantment form, right? We are enchanting our lands to tap for extra colors or <coughs> extra green. Um, one of them, I think New Horizons even puts a plus one plus encounter on a creature as you enchant it. So like that's perfect synergy for the deck. I want to point out uh, um, one of my favorite ramp cards that I think is vastly underrated is Wild Growth. The single green aura for an, you chant a land and it when it's tapped, it makes a forest. So it's like it's yeah. just a one mana ramp spell. Yeah. Very yeah, yeah, good. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Couple more enchantments that just kind of make the deck work really well. Uh, one of them is Hadana's Climb. One green blue legendary enchantment at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put a plus one plus encounter on target creature. Tan is here. Uh, <laughs> then, if that creature has three or more plus one plus encounters, transform Hadana's Climb uh, to Winged Temple of Orazka. It taps to add man of any color, and you can pay one green blue tap. Target creature you control gains flying and gets plus X plus X until at a turn where X is power. So we can do this. We can, it, so we, if we do this right uh, at the beginning of, so so we can't do it the turn it flips because this and Tanazir's, oh no, we can, because at the beginning of combat, put something on Tanazir or someone else, flip it, activate it before we, before we resolve Tanazir's trigger to pass its power along. So we'll double Tanazir's power and then give that power toughness to the rest of our team. You don't need many assistant creatures. I've got a ton of enchantments here. You might be like, well, where are the little dudes? There's not enough little dudes. There's enough little dudes. Yeah. You don't need that many. You don't need very many little dudes when like they have, you know, can't be blocked and stuff like that with cards like yeah. this, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, and one more, Andy. You, I, I, think, I think you'll like this one. This one's Primal Empathy. Uh, one green blue for the enchantment that says the beginning of your upkeep. Draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a plus one plus one creature on a creature you control. Perfect, right? Just either way. Either way, we're happy. Perfect synergy here. Very happy to have either thing happen. I love it. Yeah. I love cards like this. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, we turned it into an Enchantress deck, which I think was so cool. Like, I think, like, on the surface, sure, we're making little creatures on block, we'll get them through. That's obvious, but this enchantment Enchantress angle, I gotta thank the Discord for helping me brainstorm all these things and putting all our heads together. Thank you to Pips Don't Lie, Blurry Sasquatch Chiefy, Nosrak 2, Knuckle Booper, Mattis Men, Demir Buffalo, Brave Sir Robin, Groove Chicken, T Coats, Lol What, Neo Maxis, as usual, the full gang. Uh, thanks, everybody. Couldn't couldn't have uh, done all this without you, so much appreciated. Let's do the budget report, shall we? Let's do it. I have a feeling this one came in at a very reasonable price, and I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I'm looking at the cost, but <laughs> I, uh, I, I f it just feels like you didn't really run by anything that seemed like it was like we were surprised Edric was like over a dollar, you know, like, yeah, this one feels like a lot of, of nice budget cards here. Yeah, definitely. Um, the mid price is about 86 bucks. The low is 40. Um, nice. and we can make that even cheaper. I mean, I, Utopia Sprawl is that single mana enchantment aura that has to enchant a forest. Uh, and then that land taps for two mana instead of one. Uh, that's a, that's, this card's like 
almost 10 bucks. So that's wild. That's, I mean, it, 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 it kind of makes sense to me in that I, I get it. It's wild growth. That makes any color. It like makes any colors, two of the chosen. No, it's add one of the, yeah. So add one of the chosen color of any color, basically. Yeah, you have to get the green from the forest. It has to go on. Like there's a world where like, if your first land is like a, not a forest, if it's like a, a non basic, you can't play this on one. Totally. Totally. And, and, yeah, I think that's why it's like kind of cousin the wild growth, the original kind of version of it is kind of underrated because it's not fixing our mana. Whereas this one is fixing the mana, it's ramping us all for one, like and it only asks that we have a forest. That's a pretty small yeah. ask. That's pretty but reasonable. Like, trade it in for wild growth or something else. It's yeah, for ten bucks though, certainly I would just yeah, get any of the other ones that do the same thing. Ooh, Andy, did you know this next card was as expensive as it was? I did not even know about this card. It's called Cephalid Constable. It's one blue blue for a 1-1. Uh, Cephalid Wizard, it says, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, return up to th that many target permanents that player controls to their owner's hands. Okay, I do remember this card now, because I remember seeing a, a creature that did this. This was it, obviously. But mm -hmm. it's up to seven fifty, almost yeah. 10 bucks for this thing. Um, I mean, powerful ability. I get it, yeah. We can see why it's so good in here. If you can make this unblockable and like yeah. give it like ten power, then they have to return ten permanents. That's wild. Uh, to their hand, and w you're allowed to pick lands. Like I think that's why it's so expensive because yeah. it doesn't say non-land. So you can really just put a player's board back to turn zero. <laughs> just like, yeah, I'm gonna reverse time warp you seven times. Like it's almost worse than annihilator. Like annihilator, almost the, the highest annihilator as well. Like. I don't know what six. Five, well, this say that's illegal. Yeah, there's right? an yeah, there's an illegal card six. So in commander, it's like four, maybe. Yeah, it's like, four. It's four. Like you pump Cephalid Constable with Tanazir, That's already five, right? Like that's yeah. It's pretty. It's it feels comparable if you can actually get the hit in. Yeah, cut it. Save a few bucks. No big deal. Done. Um, or or maybe you're going the other way. Maybe you're like, I want to do this deck, but I want to do it with. I got some budget. I want to buy some cards and put some in there. Maybe you have an asceticism, mm. which is twenty bucks now. It's the three green green enchantment creatures you control have hexproof, and you can pay one and a green to regenerate target creature. Goes great in this deck, undoubtedly. But it's twenty bucks. You know, either you have one or you don't. This is a card that badly needs a reprint, in my opinion. Badly. Um, it was in secret packs, even. Really? Well, yeah. you know what? I mean, it's just a good card in Commander. Obviously, I mean, mm -hmm. it's 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 it is it is errated to be hexproof or not errated, but oracled. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe they don't love spreading too much hexproof around. Maybe that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, another one is Nix Bloom Ancient. <clears throat> Four green, green, green. It's the enchantment creature, the elemental, the five, five with trample that triples um, mana, basically. You know, if you yeah. tap something for mana, it triples it instead. Um, 20 bucks as well. Uh, this one, I actually kind of expected this to drop after a little while. Like, I thought there would be a lot of good hype around it, but it seems to have maintained. It's a bit win more. It is a bit win more, yeah. And, like, I I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised because you, you still need to get up there to seven before you can cast it. And then, obviously, it's very good once it's on the, on the battlefield. But getting it onto the battlefield can be a bit of a... It's, it's yeah. you know, it's not nothing. And quite frankly, I don't know if we can you really maximize triple mana. <laughs> like at that point, we're just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, like I want to see big X spells. Like this is one that, you know, if you can run that like Prismari deck you were running, where you wanted to play a bunch of oh, X spells, yeah. you know, that could use an X blue mage if it was if it was uh, able to use green. Would be perfect there. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I didn't even talk about it, but sure, like any of your like doubling seasons to get extra counters, like anything mm -hmm. like that, of course, throw those in, right? Uh, there's some Enchantress cards that are like specifically very expensive because they haven't been printed very often. Um, so sure, run a couple of those. Like it's up to you. You can, you could, you could crank this up to 150, 200 bucks, no problem, but or run it for 86. Hardened Scales is like six, seven sure. bucks. That's yeah, that's, that's fairly reasonable. You could, you know, swap one of those out. That's a, that's a great card whenever we're adding counters to stuff. So yeah, 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 cool. This is a good deck. I this think so. Fun. It's I, super fun. Uh, yeah, I I love Simic like big beefy creatures. Like it's really yeah, it's it's really fun. Um, yeah. Well, let's um, 
that's it. That's the deck. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, thanks for watching uh, this week. We're going to be back again next week with more. Uh, in the meantime, check out Lost Cards when it when it drops because we're going to be uh, we'll talk about a couple of the angles we didn't hit on this episode. Check it out. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. That helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.